Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Yo Yo Man. Welcome to club number three. Welcome to Huddersfield. So yes, we are manager of Huddersfield Town, of course, sitting in the championship. Now I did have to go forward to the 14th of September before I got myself a new club. No jobs opened up over the summer. We've missed the summer transfer window, unfortunately. So it's going to be a similar situation to Birmingham City where our first transfer window won't be until January. So what's happening with Huddersfield right now? Well, let's look at what's happened since the start of the game. They finished mid-table the very first season, mid-table again the second season. They got the playoffs in the third season, didn't get promoted. Uh, just out, is that the playoffs? Just outside the playoffs in uh, the next season, and then 11th. So they're a bit of a mid-table championship club, which obviously is fine by me. We're not looking for... A ready-made squad, we are more than capable of making the required changes to get us out of this league, should it be necessary. But in terms of how they're doing this season, they're not doing so great. If we look at the Skybet Championship table, they currently sit in 23rd position after 7 games, winning only once and losing 6 games. That is not ideal. One of the positives of this though is we have given ourselves more games to be able to turn things around than we did at Birmingham City. And if you remember the championship season under Birmingham City, we actually made the playoffs and got promoted. So whilst it doesn't look great on paper, I'm still hopeful that maybe with a few good signings in January, we might be able to get to the playoffs. We're only 10 points outside of it as things stand. Um, it's That's a long way away though. That's second half of the season. We'll rejudge and see where we are after the January transfer window. In terms of the club vision then with us coming over, they are expecting a top half finish in the championship. So pretty lofty expectations for a team sitting in the bottom three, if you ask me. But one of the nice things about uh, Huddersfield compared to Birmingham at the very least, their finances are very, very healthy. They sit on a £32 million budget over our balance, giving us a £4.5 million transfer budget and £624,000 available in the wages, which actually gives us £177,000 available to play with. <laughs> we are going to have some fun with that in January, I'm telling you. So we've actually already been at the club for about five days or so. I've made a lot of my back backroom staff changes, appointing new faces. Um, a lot of people must have left with the outgoing manager. So um, we've, we've filled those gaps. We may still need a physio to come in, but that'll be sorted before long. And we've got a decent enough uh, coaching setup here. In terms of the squad then, who are the players that we will be looking at to get us out of this league? Luke Daly will be the first one. Luke Daly is a left back, 22 years old, English, 3.5 star current, 4.5 star potential. Physicals to absolutely dream of for a wing back. I am absolutely loving that and he is a big reason why we are using the formation that we are using, which I will show you shortly. But I am looking to him to be our mainstay on our side. Similar to Jude Bellingham um, for Birmingham City. I think this boy will become a Premier League level centre left back if he's not already. And, and I know this because I was scouting him for Barnsley. And if he was available for a decent fee, uh, not Barnsley, for Birmingham. He would have been at Birmingham with me if we could have signed him. Other than Luke Daly, there's not very many players I'm excited about. Albion Ajeti is our, listed as our best striker. I don't really like the look of him. Bring me Sebastiano Esposito or any day over that guy. Youssef Et Benassar was a new signing, a deep lying playmaker in defensive midfield. We all know how I like them. Um, I think he will be a very, very good player in the championship and should excel with us. John Stankovic, I remember him from a couple of years gone by. I'm pretty sure he used to be a wonder kid on Football Manager. Um, signed from Borussia Dortmund a lot and long, long time ago. Should be a good centre half for us. And we do need centre-halves. We are playing quite a lot of them, as you'll see shortly. Um, apart from that, Lewis O'Brien's going to be playing the centre of midfield for us. Uh, Mark Gruel will be Mark Gruel will be another centre-half who starts for us. Ivorian, a little bit of potential with him. In terms of good potential players, we've got Mick Quirk, a centre-back who will be starting at pretty much every game I can get him in. Uh, 20 determination, a good personality, three-star current, five-star potential. English centre-back, no-brainer. Get him played. And we've also got Harry Wing, who's a central midfielder, the sign from, I think it was QBR, for 1. Point, oh, it was West Brom, for £1.4 million last season. And whilst he won't initially be in my starting plans, he's decent enough with a little bit of potential to grow. He might be one of the ones who gets a little bit sacrificed because we are on this accelerated time schedule. I'm not going to have years to be able to put into this boy's development. So um, 
But apart from that, let's take a look at the formation. It's a, it's a little, little, little bit different from what I'm used to um, compared to Birmingham and Barnsley. We played pretty much the exact same formation. This is different. So three centre-backs, um, obviously with the very, very attacking wing-backs. The deep-line playmaker sitting in the hole. Two Metzalas in the centre midfield, an advanced playmaker and an advanced forward. This is all just an initial tactic. It will probably evolve over the course at least of the first half of this season. Probably still making changes in the second half. But it's the kind of formation I really, really like. Uh, getting rid of the wingers, giving our wing-backs both the attacking and defensive duties. Um, and I, like, I really want to get the best out of, um, I've got his name already, Daly on the left-hand side. And I think playing him as a left complete wing-back on the left-hand side, I think he will be a very, very good attack and threat for us. And we should start to see the best out of him. So, it goes without saying that Huddersfield have obviously not had a very good start to the season, losing pretty much every game, only winning the previous game just before the manager got sacked. I'm surprised he got sacked after the Middlesbrough game after a win, but that's how things go. I did declare me interest in the job once it became available so that might have had some effect on the board actually making the change Huddersfield was the first championship job that became available for me it was between Huddersfield and Middlesbrough they were both um like very unstable in terms of the managerial security I could have announced for Middlesbrough I decided it for Huddersfield purely down to the history of them being recently in the Premier League I thought the finances would might be a little bit better and um even just looking at the squad, I really wanted to manage Luke Daly, so I'm happy to have taken over here. In terms of our previous jobs, though, shall we quickly check what's happening at Barnsley and Birmingham? So it's obviously very early on in the season, but things aren't really looking that great for the pair of them. Barnsley sit bottom of the table, and Birmingham sit in 15th, having won zero games but drawn three. All oh, that's that's a very poor start, considering the sort of teams they've been playing. Barnsley's start is a little bit more understandable when you look at who they've been playing. Let's have a quick check of who they've actually signed or sold this season. They've sold Clayton, who wasn't mine. Bruno Costa was mine. 3.8 million, 4.6. I forgot he even existed, <laughs> to be quite frank with you. He probably hasn't played a lot of football for Barnsley over the course. Well, he played 14 games last season. That's not so bad. But he's left the club now. In terms of incomings, anything major, Nathan Young Coombs is a very, very good signing, a youngster. English, £22 million pounds was that. Alfie McCalmont, he's a decent sign. I like I like the this, this strategy they've got here. They're not signing too old. And if they are signing whole, all like Ross Barkley, they're not spending massive money. They've only spent, what, £6 million pound for him from Norwich. Paolo Gazinga from Spurs, probably a backup goalkeeper, I would imagine. And Hugo Lloris as well from Fiorentina. He's starting goalkeeper, oh dear. That's... Um, Probably not ideal for a 37-year-old French goalkeeper. Probably he should be fine. Ian McAvoy, a decent youngster. Now I'm more interested if Birmingham have sold anyone major from our starting squad. Thomas Nielsen for 5.25 million. That does not seem like a great deal. He was very, very good for us actually playing on that right-hand side. He's now natural on that side as well. So they could have kept him. And ah, he's worth £14.5 million pounds now. Um, poor seal from my books 22 years old as well so uh, Inaki Penner left that was always planned in terms of incomings then they've spent 56 Ronald Araujo coming in from Levante good signing I like it 25 years old very very good centre back uh, who else have they brought in Zielinski he's like 30 isn't he yes he is very very old too much money spent on him Taylor Howard Bellis 9.25 another good young English centre back that's a good signing I like that. Ben Davies, they needed a left back, 11.25. Probably a bit too much, but he is a very, very needed position. We, of course, we were relying on Jesus Vazquez when we were manager, and he has now returned to Valencia. Chad Myers from the uh, youngster. Why spend 10 million on him? And Alberto Salenza and uh, Ludovic Reis were both signings that we made before we left, agreed the deals for them. So they have both come in. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping. Alberto Salenza becomes available for a loan deal. But anyway, that's enough chitter chatter from me. Blackburn are going to be our first game in charge of Huddersfield Town. Now, in terms of Blackburn, they are currently sitting in ninth position. So they've had a decent start of the season. They are currently unbeaten. One of only three sides, four sides, who remain unbeaten in the championship. So it's going to be a tough ask to get a first win here. This is very much information gathering. Seeing how the tactic works, seeing how the boys perform in it. 
they're, they're obviously going to struggle for the first 10 games or so as I start to implement this, uh, the tactic and they become familiar with it. The more wins we can get in that period, the better. We all know form and morale is massive in Football Manager, so we need to get onto that quickly. So let's introduce you to the first limb for today's game. Joel Pereira will start in goal. A decent enough goalkeeper for the championship. I don't think it'll be an area where I look to improve for this season. Quirk, of course, we've already spoken about our young English centre-half. Going to be giving him as much game time as possible. Gule was spoke about. Stankovic was spoke about. So then we're going to be our three starting centre-half. We've got Fabio Barini, who is um, a player who can play all across the park. So he's going to start a right wing back today. Um, as we're not playing wingers, so he's not going to get much game time. Ryan Niambia would usually be our starting right wing back, but he is not available for the day, as he is on loan from Blackburn. We'll start with Ad Benassar as well uh, in defensive midfield. We've seen him, as we have seen Daly. O'Brien will start in the centre of midfield. Decent enough. I, w I wouldn't mind signing another centre midfielder who's maybe got a bit of potential. Bakuna alongside him. Both of them at Zala rolls. Let's see how they get on with that. Marcons will start as our attacking midfielder. He won't be our starting one, I don't think. I think that's going to be Ramadan Sobi when he's fully fit. Um, but at the moment, he's not quite there. And Ajeti, as we've already spoken about before, will be starting as striker. Not ideal. I think I prefer Grant. Um, I think I would have played him if he was available as he's more used to that advanced forward role. But he's injured for six weeks. So Blackburn come on us with a pretty defensive 4-1-4-1. We've got no idea how we compare to this Blackburn side. Let's just get to the game and see how we get on. First highlight of the game, we are in possession. Bakunia finds Daly. This is exactly what I'm wanting. Daly bombing down that left-hand side. Whips the ball in, but Ajeti can't get it on target. So not only are Blackburn playing a defensive formation, they're also playing defensively. So it might be a little bit of a struggle for us to break that down. We might have to lower the tempo um, and look to draw them out like that. But O'Brien with a corner, 36 minutes in, is played in. Oh, oh, come on. Yes, Youssef Ait Benassar gets his first goal of the season. His first goal for the club, then I'm presuming, and puts us 1 0 up eight minutes before half time. This is perfect. Exactly the sort of position we want to be in against the defensive side. We can play a little bit more passively now and try and draw them out. And 1 0, ideal. Oh, and he gets his goal and he gets himself injured. We'll bring on Harry Wing, our young English midfielder, to get him some game time playing that defensive midfield role. But there it is for the first half. Huddersfield 1, Blackburn Rovers 1. This would be an absolute dream start if we can keep it going. I will be reacting on the changes that Blackburn make. They are still playing defensively. They're still playing the 4-1-4-1. Looks like they've just manoeuvred some player roles there. We'll see if that has any effect. 25 minutes to go. We have our first highlight of the second half. Luke Daly picks up, it is Luke Daly, picks up the ball on the left-hand side, whips it in. Fabio Barini's there, gets cleared though. O'Brien is going to keep this in and keep the attack up. He's got a man there, but he doesn't need him. He gets past the Blackburn Rose defenders. Back post to Daly and Fofana saves. The highlight is continuing, so maybe there is another chance for somebody here. Daly, bombing down the left-hand side. He gets past his man, he whips it in. Barini's back post. Oh, he hits the post. The defender clears. Very unfortunate not to be 2-0 up with 15 minutes to go. Blackburn is still playing defensively. 10 minutes to go. They are not changing. With 5 minutes to go, we are going to make some subs then. Billy Ak Billy Ars. Let's bring him on. Tap midfield. <laughs> we'll bring on Luke Ehrlin as well on that right-hand side for Fabio Barini. They've now switched. Very attacking. We are going to go on the counter. Highlight. O'Brien plays in the free kick. Let's play Black Post. Quirk is there. Mick Quirk, our young English centre-back, gets his first goal of the season, puts us 2-0 up and gives us three points in our very first game. Much needed as well. We need to turn this form around for Huddersfield really, really quickly if we are to get up into the table and start thinking about the playoffs. We need to start now. No good, you know, messing about for three or four games, getting beaten stuff. Brilliant performance against the top offside. Absolutely dominated them. Thoroughly deserved three points. Well, I'm delighted with that start. That win takes us now to 22nd. We're now third at the bottom of the league. Not too bad. Um, we do have some very, very strong teams in this division this season. Though. Newcastle got relegated last season. Uh, Wolves, did they get relegated? I think they did. And who else got relegated? Brighton with the other side who also got relegated this season. But as you can see by the season preview, by the way, Huddersfield were expected to be 7th. So you can see why they made such a rash decision to sack sack their uh, manager seven games into the season well looking forward to the next episode we are going to have 
maybe one episode between now and the January transfer window. So it'll be around the November time, maybe even the December time, I'm not sure. Uh, we'll see where we are in the league. I'm going to bomb through this season. I want to get to that January transfer window and I want to make some major, major changes to the starting eleven. But anyway, if you have enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like. And if you are enjoying my content, get yourself subscribed. But until next time, take it easy.